Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on community health profiles. In this tutorial, I'll be looking at Hounslow Borough Council and specifically two community health profiles for Hounslow. Um, a short health profile made up of four pages or four sides and a long health profile made up of 18 pages or 18 sides. And I think that's very important to remember uh, that one of them should be short and one of them should be long. Um, and this will be the focus for your summative essay that you will write at the end of this module. So let's begin. First of all, let me ask you a question. Who is or are the authors of these two pro profiles? Yes, that's right. On the top left hand side, you can see it says Public Health England. And then again here, Public Health England. And so the first thing you have to note and remember is that actually the both health profiles have the same author, Public Health England. And that means the only way to differentiate between these two health profiles is by yes, absolutely by the year, because this health profile was published in 2017, specifically the 4th of July 2017. And this health profile here, the long one, was downloaded by me on the 29th of January 2018. So this data in this long profile is what was current on that date. So the short health profile is referenced or cited in your essay as Public Health England 2017 and the long one as Public Health England 2018. So we are going to move back and forth between these two profiles as there are many things, many facts, many uh, indicators, as we say, or measures of health and well-being uh, that are similar across the two profiles. And there are some, uh, uh, maybe quite a few, certainly in the long health profile, which are different from the short health profile and so we want to look at what the similarities and differences are so we can understand what key information we should extract from the short one and what key information we should extract from the long one. So let's begin with the short one and see that on the first page you have a health in summary section here. Um, I will just point it out, I will just gently go around that box here. Now the important thing to remember, many students have done this in the past, is that summarizing this summary information or just presenting this summary information is not good enough. You do need to actually use the whole profile. Uh, you will get some marks uh, for summarizing it but not a lot. Uh, so if you decide that all you're going to do is just look at this summary here and just present that, uh, you won't be getting many marks. The important thing to remember, I think perhaps the most important thing, and I will highlight it just to emphasize that point, is this bit here. Um, as you can see, it says the local priorities, priorities in Hounslow include children's oral health, childhood obesity, and active living. And that is something we can discuss and point out uh, at the end of the summary community health profile that we've developed. So we can uh, uh, do a, a sentence or, or a couple of sentences uh, a small paragraph on what the priorities are and that can link to the joint strategic needs assessment so you can get a little bit more information about the priorities from that larger document. The main thing to remember is that you are getting information from these two profiles. You do not need to get it from any other sources and in fact it is you get higher marks if you actually interpret this data than try and look for other information. So please bear that in mind uh, when you do your summative uh, uh, essays. So as you can see, both give a short map, uh, uh, sorry, a small map um, uh, and a slightly different one. So it gives you a sense of the size of Hounslow and, and what's around it, what other uh, settlements, what other towns, villages, cities uh, are around it. Um, but we can move on from there. Um, so let's go on to the second page of the short health profile. So as we can see, there is a 
population pyramid as it's called on the left hand side this is this here and that is actually replicated on the second page of the long health profile as well in a slightly different way but uh, whereas this on the short health profile is quite tall and a little bit squashed it's quite sh it's shorter and, and uh, wider in the longer health profile um, but the key information actually is and that's what we need to start with is demographic information we need to understand what kind of population lives in Hounslow so the short health profile if we read that and I might make it a little bit bigger so it's a bit easier for for you to see So we can see here that in 2015, the population of Hounslow was approximately 269,000 people. And if we look here on the long health profile, we can see again, it says the same thing, that the total population, oops, total population in Hounslow was 268,770. So you get a much more kind of uh, uh, precise figure. And again, it's the same year, 2015. So you can use either of those numbers, uh, but be careful to make sure that you reference correctly. So if you decide to say 269,000, then that needs to be referenced as Public Health England, comma, PHE, comma, 2017. Uh, the reason to put in PHE is that from that point onwards, when you reference Public Health England, you can just say PHE, capital P, capital H, capital E. Okay. And then what can we look at? Well, actually here we get an estimate of what the future population is going to be like. So in 2020, it is projected that the population of Hounslow will be, just remove that, the population of Hounslow will be, 290,000 people. Now if you look at the long health profile there is no estimate given but there is something else given and what is that? Yes that's right you actually get a big breakdown so you have these pie charts at the top and you actually get a breakdown. Now hopefully you're already seeing something uh, particularly in the long health profile which is that the population of Hounslow is being compared to the population of that's right England yeah and so often we are often comparing against the England average because that's what tells us whether England is uh, sorry Hounslow is has better health than England or whether Hounslow has worse health than England and obviously we can't compare it against every single local authority every single council in England so we look at the average of all the councils and whatever that average is we say it's better than the average or worse than the average and sometimes as you'll see uh, we find that it's significantly better or significantly worse and that relates to whether it's a real difference or whether it's uh, actually you can say it's in line with the England average and we'll come on to that a bit later so what can we find from this so from these two from the demographic data in these two profiles we can as I just said we can say that uh, the population of, of Hanzo is 269,000 or 268,770 as of 2015 which is the latest figures we have. So we don't have figures for 2016 or 2017. And we also know that the population is expected to rise so that by 2020, we expect the population to be around 290,000. And there is also figures uh, from both population pyramids, but also in the table on the short health profile, which shows that there are slightly more men at the moment 136,000 compared to 133,000 women and you could do that as a percentage and work that out but that by and that by 2020 again there'll be slightly more men compared to women 149,000 compared to 141,000 
I don't think that's an important figure. Uh, uh, the first one, 2015, is is fine to quote, but you don't need to worry about the the projected population. I think you can just say that the population is projected to rise. And then the third line in the table shows the percentage of people from ethnic minorities. And again, you can see that 50.5% of the population of Hounslow here is from an ethnic minority background. Yeah, And actually, it doesn't say that here. But if you change uh, to turn to the next page, which is page three, you will see that you actually do get figures for the black and minority ethnic population uh, from uh, the long profile. And as you will see, you will get, you, you, it actually shows a slightly different figure. And that's because they're measuring slightly different things. So here you have a black and minority ethnic population uh, of 48.6% based on 2011 figures. But if you look here, on the short health profile, it gives you a little bit of commentary. It says the age profile table present demographic information for the residents of the area of and England. This includes 2014 based population projection to 2020. The percentage of people from ethnic minority backgrounds, sorry for that, apart from ethnic minority backgrounds, is actually from October from October 2014 to September 2015 and I think that's important so actually these figures are measuring slightly different things so that so again you can pick one or the other generally you should pick the latest best figures that you have so in this context you should probably pick the short health profile because that seems to be the better figure and so what does that mean well that means basically there is no point in using that figure of population whose ethnicity is not white 62.1 percent the reason for that is because that's an older figure and you should not be mixing old figures with new figures so uh if you had so either you talk about the 2011 figures and discuss those, or you just use the simple 2014 15 figure of uh, I think Maharaj is being 53, 50.5%, of which f just over 53% are male and 47.6% are female. That's fine. And then the fourth indicator here is the number of number of dependents which essentially means children and and elderly people or people with disabilities who are who are dependent who are cared for by people who are working or able-bodied who can work and essentially it says that the dependency ratio is 49.7 percent and so what does that mean so what that means is that there for every one dependent there are two people who are working hence the 50 percent the dependency ratio is a indicator of the number of people who are dependent who need care and that's including children as well as people with disabilities or long-term health conditions uh, who are adults as well as elderly people who need care compared to how many people who are working and if we look at the same thing, you can compare that to England. And if we look down here, we can see that for England, the dependency ratio is 60.7%, which is pretty close to 60%. And uh, for this example, let's move it down to 60%. So what does that mean? That means that for every six dependents, there are 10 people who are in paid employment uh, between the ages of 15 and 64 years and if we narrow that down a bit more that means it's three dependents for every five people who are working and that is a higher figure than for Hounslow where it there are one dependent for every two people who are working the, why is that an important figure that's an important figure because it tells us how, where, where, that our population is generally aging that basically we're having more and more people who are dependent and a smaller smaller number of people who are of working age young able-bodied fit uh, both to look after 
those people who are dependent as well as to basically support the economy and keep the country going in terms of income coming in to provide the services and support. This is another important point to remember that when we're when you're discussing your and developing your summaries, the key numbers should be either percentages or rates and we'll come on to what rates are so we're not really interested in actual numbers because obviously England is much bigger than Hounslow so knowing that there are 54 million people in England compared to 269,000 people in Hounslow doesn't tell us much but actually knowing that for example here at the bottom on the third line 13.2 percent of the population of England is from an ethnic minority group then we can see that Hounslow has is a really large ethnic minority population compared to other parts of the country yeah almost half the population is from ethnic minority but only about 10 percent one in ten or one in uh, nine of the population in England are from an ethnic minority so what can we say here so if we move move so one of the nice things about the long health profile is that it provides a graph and it, while it's not so useful here um, uh, it does give a quick look you can see visually that you know almost 50 percent of the population of Hounslow is black and American I think uh, uh, while only about just over 10 percent of the population of England is from an ethnic minority background but it will get better when you look at some of the other graphs that are there and it will provide you with a good indicator of what you need to be talking about in your summary profiles and in the essay that you're going to write for which these summary profiles will be the kind of core part of that. So let's move on now and let's talk about deprivation. So you can see here at the bottom there's a deprivation national view and what we're also going to move to is page four which again here gives the indices of deprivation and some deprivation indicators in the long profile. Now, one thing to mention is that there, both in both profiles, there is the deprivation is covered in uh, in a few areas. So, in the short one, it's covered on this page, page two, but it's actually also covered uh, a little bit in on page three in terms of life expectancy uh, but also it is covered on page four where you can see the first indicator and let me just make it a bit bigger oops make it a bit bigger the first indicator at the top of the last page is deprivation score IMD 2015 and you here is the local value which is Hounslow this is about Hounslow this whole line this is the England and this is the worst borough the worst local authority the, the, the figure for the worst uh, local authority so so and again you have things like children in low-income families as well which is also about deprivation so let's look at let's look at this let's start with the let's start with the maps and the graph and then we can move on from there so how do we interpret this map it's quite difficult you can see here at the bottom you have a legend and it says that the most deprived areas the poorest areas in Hounslow have been covered have been uh, colored dark green and the least deprived uh, areas uh, the ones that are more well off uh, or the most well off richest areas is a kind of light very light green uh, uh, shading so you can see here on this you can see here there's an area here to the south there's an area here to the north and again there's an area here to the south but more kind of eastern uh, on the eastern part of, of Hounslow uh, that is quite deprived so it's it's scattered so the first thing we can say is deprivation in Hounslow is scattered across the borough there's no one area or one part of the borough that is deprived however we can also say is generally deprivation is occurring on the southern parts of the borough yeah with a little bit on the northern end of the borough yeah uh, and uh, I think that's what all we can really say uh, without it getting confusing. So, so just recapping, what can we say? How can how do we interpret this graph? Well, we can say that deprivation is scattered across the borough, and with 
some areas to the south, both south, kind of the western end, and on the eastern end, which have higher levels of deprivation, and some parts of the northern end, which also again have high levels of deprivation. Okay, and this is from the index of multiple multiple deprivation 2015. Okay, so ha what about this graph here? Well, again, it's a similar thing. So dark green is the most deprived. So you can see here, roughly 20% of residents in in England live in deprivation, you know, highest, the most deprived group. Um, but in Hounslow, it's not so, so bad. It's only about approximately 10%. So compared to England, Hounslow, 10% of Hounslow residents live in the most deprived areas compared to 20% of England. And then if you look, this is very interesting, 20% of England residents live in the second most deprived quintile, while approximately, if you look, it goes from 10% to almost 50%. 40% of Hounslow residents live in the second most deprived quintile. Yeah, and quintile just means quin. If you know about quintuplets and triplets, quin just means five. So this is just making it into five bands. So you've got one, two, three, four, five. So you've got here the most deprived quintile, most deprived group, most deprived uh, people living uh, here, which is 10% of the population of Hounslow. And then this 40% of the population is living uh, in the second most deprived group. And then you have a middle group, which is kind of in between, not not deprived and not, not well off. And then you have the second least deprived and the least deprived right at the bottom. So in Hounslow there's a very small number compared to compared to there's twenty percent of people in England who are in the least deprived category, but in Hounslow it's like one percent or very small amount. Yeah. So relatively speaking, while Hounslow doesn't have the most extreme forms of deprivation, it is quite deprived with almost fifty percent of the population either in the most deprived or second most deprived uh, uh parts of the population of England. Okay, so we know that. So what can we what else can we look at? Well, if we look at deprivation scores, we can see that compared to England which has a score of 21.8, Hounslow has a score of 22.5 and that's exactly the same as what's written on the long health profile. So you can use either of those figures, they're exactly the same. The other thing that the small one has is children living in low income families, yeah? And again, they're 21.4% and, and just in case you're wondering how do I know that's a percentage, well actually this is how we work it out. There it is. Can you see there? It says two percentage of children under 16 in low income families. So here is how I know that's a percentage. So it's really important to read these notes, which tells you how to read those numbers. What do those numbers mean? Are they a rate? And we'll talk about what those are in a moment and whether they're a percentage as they are here. Yeah. So, so as you can see, children in low income families and there's a similar figure that's given in the long health profile, but it's slightly different. It says here, children living in income deprived households. Yeah. And you can see here, this is, it gives the numbers. And then what is more important is the percentages. But the graph is also important. You can see here that actually it's not just that it's worse, it's significantly worse. What that means is significantly in this context is actually a very special type of thing. It's a, it's a statistical thing which says that there is a real difference. I, it really is worse. It's not just slightly worse. There is a real diff, important difference between the health of people of Hounslow or the deprivation suffered by the experienced by the people of Hounslow compared to the England average. So, so essentially... 
income deprivation is significantly worse, child poverty is significantly worse, and older people living in deprivation is significantly worse than the England average. And you can see the percentages are here, yeah? Income deprivation, 14.8 compared to 14.6. Now, so the number here is not very big. But what it's saying is, though that number is not very big, so we might say, oh, actually, there's no real difference. It's very similar. Actually, when we actually work it out and use statistics, we find that, no, even that small difference is actually a real difference, i.e. there is something going on there where people do have less income than people uh, uh, on average in England. So what can we, so uh, we can see here, and then if we look at child poverty, it's 22.9, uh, 22.2, sorry, and 19.9. And so if we look here, slightly different figures, and there's a reason why. Any any guesses? So here, if you look, you've got children in low-income families. Oops, apologies, I shouldn't do that. Oops, no, it doesn't work. So, yes, that's right, if you spotted it, 2014. So the, the figure here, 21.4% of children living in low-income families, uh, under 16s that is, 21.4% of under 16s live in low income families or low income households. The figure is from 2014, but the figure in the long health profile is from 2015. Yeah, so this is the more up to date figure. So these are the figures you should talk about more than you should talk about this one here. Yeah, and it's saying the same thing child poverty is significantly worse, and that's what that's saying with a red dot here saying the same thing is significantly worse okay okay what else do we have here well we don't have we have homelessness here if you look we have homelessness here oops we have homelessness statue homelessness so we can say that in terms of homelessness it's 0.3 to 0.9 now what does that mean now I th i'm just going to move it forward just to see if there is a homelessness figure here i don't think there is no, there is not. So I'm just going to move back to where we started. So we are here. And so here, in terms of deprivation, there are also some other figures that we could look at. But let's stop there and go back uh, because we've we've looked at the two figures. We've looked at deprivation now. So again, you can talk about it from the long health profile. You can talk about income deprivation, child poverty, and older people in deprivation in 2015. Okay, so let's move back and do page three before we move on to the big page you know of all these set of indicators so what do we start with we start with life expectancy so life expectancy what's the difference so compared to the most deprived areas and the most deprived people and the least deprived areas and the least deprived people there is an a life expectancy gap of 5.3 years for men and 4.3 six years for women what does that mean well that basically means that on average poorer men men who are living in poverty or on low incomes on average live 5.3 years less than richer men or men who are well off or who have a stable job uh, have a uh, good income coming in and the same for women slightly less 4.6 years but again the same and so that's all it's saying and if you look here you can actually work out the difference in the actual age but you don't need to do that you don't need to look at because actually at the back of this you also have life expectancy so if you go to page 17 here there is also life expectancy here. now again you need to look at the years the year here in the short profile is 2013 to 15 but in the long profile it is not that it is 2011 to 2015 so it's a longer period I think it's better to look at a longer period and average that out than it is to a shorter period so here life expectancy this is the total life expectancy is 79.7 years in for men and 83.7 years for women yeah but we don't get the actual gap. The gap, the actual gap is not provided here. So you have two options. What you can, what I would suggest you do is to actually not use this one because while this one does give a better figure, this one gives you both the gap, 
between rich and poor, which this one, the long health profile doesn't. So the short health profile shows you what the gap is between the rich and the poor, yeah, which, which this one, the long health profile does not. And then if you look at the, at the indicators 22 and 23, that tells you life expectancy at birth is 79.8, and life expectancy at birth for females is 84.1 yeah the local value as i said local value is means the hounslow value the or whatever the, your borough is the local value means the borough the local authority that you are talking about yeah so if you look not so different yeah the figures are not so different here if you look at the figures for between 2011 and 2015 life expectancy for males is 79.7 .7. here it is 79.8 and for women it's 84.1 and here it's slightly lower 83.7 so i would use the short health profile for your life expectancy and not look at the life expectancy part this part page 17 you don't need to look at but so what have we got just recap we know that poorer men live on average live 5.3 years less than richer men yet yeah, they and then the uh, and poorer women live 4.6 years less than richer women um uh, but the average life expectancy in Hounslow is 79.8 for men and 84.1 for women so you would start with that so you'd say average life expectancy at birth in men in Hounslow is 79.8 years and life expectancy at birth in women is 84.1 years. However, there is a health inequality gap, a life expectancy gap between men and women, between the between the most deprived men and the least deprived men uh, of 5.3 years, and between the most deprived women and the least deprived women of 4.6 years. So on average, poor the most deprived men and women the poorer men and women live between 4.6 and 5.3 years less than the well-off richer men and women what does the long health profile provide well long health profile apart from providing life expectancy it also provides two other key indicators it provides healthy life expectancy at birth and disability free life expectancy at birth so what does that mean well what that means is on average how long is the life that people lead in Hounslow and in England healthy i.e they not, don't have a health condition they haven't got diabetes they haven't got a disability uh, physical or mental or of any other type so here we are it shows here very clearly that while life expectancy is similar the orange means not significantly different so it's similar to the england average we can see here that healthy life expectancy is is, is significantly worse significantly in the sense that there's a real difference though that difference is actually quite small between england and uh Hounslow. So if you look here, healthy life expectancy at birth for males is 63.1 years compared to 63.4 years. So it's only a 0.4 difference, but it's a real difference. And the same with healthy life expectancy at birth for females is 63.3 compared to 64.8. Now that's a slightly bigger number, bigger difference um, uh, compared to the men. But and again, as I said, it's a significant. It is a real difference between them. It's not some kind of just a year-on-year -year variation or change. Yeah, it is a real difference that we may need to do something about in the future if we want to reduce health inequalities. Uh, but it's interesting if we look at disability-free life expectancy. Here, the figures are a bit different. Here, we find that actually men are doing better in terms of n living a life which is free from disability. Men in hounds are actually doing better than the england average and significantly but it's a real difference they are better off from a disability perspective however women continue to be worse off off so they had poorer health life expectancy healthy life expectancy and they also have poorer disability free life expectancy so obviously women though you normally expect them to live longer and be healthier that it's not, it's not necessarily the case so they are living longer but many of these women are living with poorer health and with some disability.
Okay, I hope that makes sense. Okay, so let's move on. So if we go back, I'm going to move that back to where we were, to the early part. Where were we? We were here at deprivation. So where do we go next? Well, if we look at this graph here on the short health profile, let's see what that says. Well, what's the next thing? So the next graph is looking at early deaths from all causes for men, early deaths from all causes for women, and then early deaths from heart disease and stroke, and early deaths from cancer. Now, you need to look at the legend here at the bottom here, can you see? Just going to highlight it. So you can see here that the black triangles mean England, the turquoise dots mean local average, which is Hounslow in this case, or whatever your borough is, and then the square greys are the least people who are least deprived in the area, like Hounslow or your local authority, and the diamonds are the people who are most deprived. And then the grey is just showing what the inequality gap is between those two. So the first two, the top two graphs, are about health inequalities. And what it's showing is that while the trend in all causes early deaths is similar, so England, yeah, since at the beginning in 2003, there was a difference where actually Hounslow was doing better, uh, was doing worse. Sorry, my apologies. Let me start that again. So... In 2003, Hauser had a higher number of men who died early of different types. All, call, all causes means all types of, of illnesses, you know, whether there's cancer, heart disease, stroke, uh, lung disease. Yeah. But over time, that gap has narrowed, yeah, on average, yeah, so that by 2014, it is actually very similar to the England average. However, that hides something. If you look between the rich and the poor, between the men who are well off versus the men who are not well off and are in living in poverty, then the gap is continues to be exactly the same that it was in 2003, i.e. the poorer men are dying at a higher number uh, compared to those uh, at a higher rate, I should say, compared to those who are well off. So in this case, you can see here, it's called something called the age standardized rate per 100,000 population. So here, roughly, we could say approximately 600,000, uh, 600 deaths per 100,000 population. Yeah, you don't need to worry about what age standardized means. It just means it's a way of developing a number that we can use to compare lots of different areas, regardless of whether there's young people living there or older people living there they can we can match them in a way that is standardized you know that is the same so uh, taking everything into account what's the what are the differences in deaths occurring between different areas and that's often a useful thing for us to know so what this so just going back so what it shows is that actually more poor people are dying uh, uh, compared to the people who are well off or richer in Hounslow, that's men. So, and if you look at the women, it's the same thing. So, again, slightly more women were dying in 2003, but then that seems to have leveled off. So that by 2006, certainly 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, and it's been the same as the England, but something's happened here since then. Women seem to be doing better. There are less women in Hounslow are dying compared to England, just slightly, yeah, but there is there. And there's something kind of similar is happening with health inequalities uh, where there seems to be a downward trend uh, so that you can see that the diamonds represent the most deprived women, that their death rates have gone down. Yeah, and they've kind of picked up. So they went down all the way down to about 2010, and they've kind of then picked back up again a little bit. We can say more about this. If we look at the the uh, those who are well off, the least deprived women, you can see that they went down from 2003 to 2004, but then something happened, and then 2004 all the way up to 2007, they actually got worse. There were uh, more women were dying 
uh, well-off women were dying in Hounslow, while the trend in the poorer women was actually going down. And then from 2007, again, we go back to kind of, you know, going down, reducing the number of deaths that are happening. And then since 2011, it seems to have stabilised. Yeah, it's almost a line, straight line. Slightly went up slightly and then started going back down. OK, so that's interesting. That's interesting in that say, saying that health inequalities between between women, you know, rich women and poor women has actually narrowed uh, between 2003 and 2014, but it hasn't in the men. So what can we say then about early deaths from heart disease and stroke? Well, a kind of similar picture, isn't it? So you've got here turquoise is Hounslow. So Hounslow starts off with a higher, you know, it's over 150 deaths per 100,000 population compared to maybe 140 deaths or maybe even 130 deaths per 100,000 population for England. And then as you see, that has gone down. So Hounslow has improved. Health of Hounslow has improved. So the death rate from early deaths from heart disease, you know, so dying of a heart attack in your 40s or your 50s has gone down or stroke in your 60s, you know, has gone down until it's become... In 2009, it was the same as England. And then it was the same in 2010, same in 2011. But unfortunately, since 2012, we're back to Hounslow getting slightly worse, even though England has been going slightly better. So actually, we, we, health inequalities are beginning to increase. So we do need to watch out for that. You know, we don't know why health inequalities are increasing. Yeah, there may be many reasons. We'd have to do research on that. We can't say what the reason is. So this is one other important thing to remember is do not try and second guess what you think the cause of this is. It's likely to be many different causes for different groups of people. Yeah. So all we're interested in at the moment is recognising trends and understanding that something's happening, whether it's getting better or worse. We would then need to do more work and more research to find out uh, why that change was happening or how that change occurred. OK, so again, let's look at early deaths from cancer and early deaths in 2003. Actually, it was very similar. You know, Hounslow in England was similar and actually Hounslow was doing better because deaths have been lower consistently than in England. Even though England has been going on a downward trend, Hansel has stayed with that and stayed continually lower, and it seems to be actually getting better. So 2014 seems to be as good as some of the previous years, like 2009 and 2008 and 2004 and 2005. So, you know, so in terms of cancer deaths, Hansel is doing quite well compared to the England average yeah and remember this is all about the England average uh, across every local authority you know averaging the the numbers out okay now we've done this so where else is that is that is that replicated well it is actually replicated in a different way on page 15 of the long health profile so if we go there we find something called premature mortality. Now, just before I move on to that, so page 15 talks about, about we can actually also look, if we go down to the health indicators, the long list of health indicators, there are some other health indicators here. So if you look at 28 and 29, I'll just make it a little bit bigger so it's slightly easier to see, under 75 mortality rate for cardiovascular disease and for cancer. And you can see here, you can see here for cardiovascular disease, it is significantly worse, but for cancer, it's significantly better. So these two indicators, 28 and 29, are reflecting these graphs, these two graphs that we've seen here, yeah? That where heart disease and stroke uh, rates are, are slightly worse and, 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 and is a real difference, so it's significantly worse, and cancer rates are better, and it's a real difference between Hounslow and uh, England average and so it's it's significantly better yeah and so here it is it's so for every so bit in, in Hounslow for cardiovascular disease 83.7 people and we can look if we go down to 28 where's 28 it's here so you can see here so for every hundred thousand people aged under 75 living in Hounslow 83.7 of them every year die of cardiovascular disease. Yeah, that's compared to only 74.6 people in England as a whole. 
Yeah. However, we're doing better than some other local authorities where there's this authority here, we don't know which one it is, their rate is 137, so 137 deaths uh, of, of, from cardiovascular disease. Yeah, but that's that's not, we're not worried about that. We're focusing on Hounslow and England. But if you look at cancer, well, cancer deaths are lower. So again, 29, so we just want to check what's the rate. So it's directly age standardized rate per 100,000 population aged under so, so, so in Hounslow, 125 people out of every 100,000, and you would put in brackets directly age standardized rate, die of cancer compared to 138.8 people per 100,000 in England as a whole. Yeah? So we can discuss that more in the lessons. And you can talk to your lecturer about this. Um, hopefully you've got that. You can, you know, re review and read through this, uh, listen through this, sorry. And then you can talk about this with your colleagues and with, with, of course, your lecturer, your group lecturer. So we've got that. So we've done that here. So I'm just going to make this a bit smaller. So what does it say in the long health profile? Well, it's a similar thing if you look, but it's slightly, slightly, slightly different. And that probably, again, reflects, guess what? Yeah, different year groups. So if we look at 20, if you look at the short health profile, the figures are from 2013 to 2015. There it is here, and there it is here, yeah? And of course, the, the graphs were for a longer period, 2003 to 2014. So what about the long health profile? Well, the long health profile, the rates are from a longer period, 2011 to 2015. So hence, there's a slight difference. So if we look at longer period, yeah, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, so almost five years, you would say, five-year average, then what we find is deaths from all causes for under 65s, something that is not discussed in the short health profile, that actually Hounslow is doing better, significantly better, less people are dying. Yeah, and this is a different rate. It's a standard mortality ratio. Yeah, and so it all causes age under seventy-five. Again, it's doing better, and cancer, as we know from the short health profile, is doing better. Now here is the slight difference. So here for coronary heart disease and circulatory diseases, so diseases of the blood system and and heart diseases as well. This is in line, it's not significantly different. So from a three year perspective, it is worse, but when you look at a five year perspective, it's it's more similar to the England average. And that kind of picks out in some of these changing differences between the two over time, yeah? So it's probably picking up some of that where it was very similar. So if you look at here, heart disease here on this graph here, you can see that for 2011, it was very similar. 2012, it was very similar, it's only got changed over the last few years and so that's probably what it was picking up so that while it is significantly worse over the last three years over the last five it's, it me seems to have it seems to be more in line with the england average yeah so that's something to watch out for that different because it's different age ranges are used to create the indicator you will have slightly different findings from the two health profiles and again that's very useful to understand and to know because the three-year difference may show that something's happening so by looking at two age ranges 2030 to 2015 and 2011 to 2015 what we can see is a change in trends yeah so over the three-year period 2013 to 2015 we are seeing that something's happening in terms of cardiovascular disease and now cardiovascular disease includes both circulatory disease and coronary heart disease yeah combined that the situation is getting worse but over a five-year period actually Hounslow is very similar and in line with the England average so often what we want to do is see things over a 10 or 15 year period Okay, so let's go back up. Okay, now we are on the indicators. So I'm going to I'm going to try and make these indicators a bit bigger because what we're going to do is we're going to go through each of the indicators separately now. This is because I think you will need to I hope you've got that you need to look across both profiles at the end just to make sure that you you discuss similar indicators 
you know, in the same paragraphs, yeah, and make sure that you reference accordingly. The reason is it'll be much easier for me to go through one and talk about what you need to pick out and then to go through the other and what you need to pick out. Now, one thing to remember is you won't be able to talk about every single key important indicator because you won't have space. So you will miss a few. So it is important about picking out the most important ones. So what do I mean by that? So, okay, let's have a look at this. Yeah. Let's have a look at this. So in this, the first thing to know is to pick out the reds. Yeah. So the key indicators that we're focused on is it's great that the greens are great. Yeah. And yes, we need to understand why we're doing well on those. But the worrying things are the ones that are red. And so this graph here, this spine chart here, this traffic light uh, graph here helps us to identify. So you can see that children living in low income families is not great. But violent crime is worse in terms of actual numbers, and so is obese children in year six. And then incidence of TB is also not great, so is recorded diabetes, so is new sexually transmitted infections, yeah? And then lastly, under five mortality rates for cardiovascular disease, which we talked about. So we can see that there's one, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven key things we need to make sure about. Now, some of them we may already cover through, if you like, these graphs here. So we've started covering them, and so we may not need to talk a lot about them. So, for example, that one. So we may just need to mention the actual number, yes, either from here or from the other, po uh, other uh, the longer po uh, co community health profile. So here, what we'd be interested in is we need to talk about these and potentially put them in order. And I think you can obviously see that this, you know, the the three biggest outliers are, are, are in order would be incidence of TB, obese children, and l violent crime. Yeah, and then the others are pretty much in a row. The other four come behind those. So let's look at it so we've already talked about children in low-income families so children in low-income families so the percentage is 21.4 compared to the england average of 20.1 so there is a sig yeah so so the percentage of children living in low-income families is significantly worse at 21.4 percent compared to the england average of 20.1 percent yeah great and then we look at violent crime. So what's violent crime? It says 23. What does that mean? So if we go down, violent crime is number five. So we go down and violent crime is, is recorded as a crude rate per 1,000 population. Yeah? Recorded violence against the person crimes crude rate per 1,000 population. So how do we read this? So it's quite simple here. So overall, there were 6,110 violent crimes. Yeah? Just as above here, there was 11,495 children living in low-income homes. Now, the, those absolute values are interesting, but they're not that useful. What we want is this. So this is 23 violent crimes per 1,000 residents, per 1,000 population. So in Hounslow, for every 1,000 people they ha in a year, in 2015-16, there were 23 violent crimes. And this compares to the England average, which is only 17.2 crimes per thousand population. So you can see it's worse. Yeah. So if you do want to quote the number, please do that at the end or in brackets. The key figures are these ones in the local value, yeah? because the rates and the percentages are much more helpful to understanding it than the actual number. Yeah, and then so we go down to obese children. So in the we have twenty four point three. So what's that again? Let's have a look at the uh, legend here. It's a percentage of school children in year six, age ten to eleven. So the percentage of school children in year six, age ten to eleven years old, who are obese in Hounslow is twenty four point three percent, which compares to the England average, which is significantly worse than the England average of 19.8%. Yeah, so let me say that again. So in year six, that's children aged 10 to 11 years old, there are 24.3% of these of children who are obese. 
and this is significantly worse than the England average of 19.8%. Okay, let's go next. Recorded diabetes, That the numbers for that is 2014-15. Now, one of the things you can do is you don't need to constantly quote the year. What you can do is you can see here the figures are from 2012 to 2015, 2016, so right, so there is a range. So what you can say is the short health profile, yet yeah, the data is from 2012 to 2016, yeah? So you're telling us already, and you can do the same for the long health profile. I won't tell you what that is. You can work that out by going through it, yeah? So for the short health profile, the, the numbers, the statistics are from the years 2012 to 2016, Okay, so recorded diabetes, what does that mean? What does 6.8, because that's the local value, what does 6.8 mean? So if we go down 18, there we are, percentage of people aged 17 and over on GP registers with a recorded diagnosis of diabetes. So when we look at recorded diabetes, we can say that 6.8% of people on GP registers are recorded have been diagnosed as having diabetes in 2014-15 yeah compared to 6.4 percent uh, of the England as a whole so let me say that again so there's 15,283 people in Hounslow who have diabetes of this and this means it's 6.8 percent of the population but not the whole population is the population aged 17 and over on GP registered have a diagnosis of diabetes. Yeah. So they, the reason we say that is because there may be people who have diabetes, but it's not recorded. It's not been diagnosed by a GP. Yeah. So one more time, recorded diabetes. 6.8% of people on GP registers have been diagnosed as having diabetes compared to 6.4% of England as a whole. Moving on to the incidence of TB, tuberculosis, we can say that 53.7, and we need to understand what that is, and that is the crude rate per 100,000 population, so the incidence of tuberculosis is 53.7 people having TB per 100,000 population compared to only 12 people getting TB between 2013 and 2015 in England as a whole per 100,000 population. And then we can say the same thing, because again, it's the same type of rate for new sexually transmitted infections. In Hounslow, the rate of new sexually transmitted infections is 902.5 per 100,000 population aged 15 to 64 years. This compares to a rate of only 795 per 100,000 for England as a whole, or the England average. Okay, and then lastly, we, we've already talked about this, but I will say it again, it's the rate of under 75 year old mortality for cardiovascular disease is 83.7 per 100,000, directly age standardized, compared to 74.6 per 100,000 in England as a whole. So I hope that makes sense. Um, and hopefully you will need to have a think and a reflection and do work around this. Yeah, this these are not easy concepts. It's easy for me to explain it like this uh, uh, and for you to listen to it. But you will need to a, listen to it again and again and also do some work and thinking around it and think about why we may have you know rates which you, we will go through in the lectures 
and have gone through in one of the earlier sessions um, and why we talk about percentages and there are reasons why we do that and uh, which are talk and that re relates to percentages really relate to prevalence and rates relate to incidents yeah because it, and it, because it does not make sense to have you know you can't talk about incidents in terms of percentages and prevalence in terms of rates yeah because incidence is about new case incidence is about new cases of disease and prevalence is about the number of existing cases of a disease or risk factor so when we talk about obesity we will talk about percentages when we talk about new cases of uh, sexually transmitted infections or tb or diabetes then we talk about rates or, or violent crime so we'll talk about rate you know there's 10 violent crimes per thousand population it would not be any point talking about oh there's 10 uh, percent of the crimes are violent well it's interesting it's not so useful to say then to actually talk about the incidents you know how many new crimes are committed that fall into the violent category okay so that's there now if you have time and opportunity you might also talk about some of the positives but in this case you know there's enough negatives to talk about but you could briefly mention that if you look at breastfeeding initiation is very good smoking cessation at time of delivery is very good GCC is achieved is very good so you could just mention it very quickly without mentioning the actual numbers but I think for the for those those things that are significant words you should mention them similarly if you look here hip fractures is better uh, people killed and injured on the roads is better suicide rates are lower uh, um, so when I say better here I actually obviously mean lower so one thing to remember is so sometimes better is higher sometimes better is lower so it's important to actually make that case so for example here GCS is achieved it's higher is better and of course with hip fractures and suicide rates and being killed of course lower is better so this means that the rate is lower than the England average so that's just one thing to bear in mind that the the figures depending on what the indicator is yeah better can mean higher or lower okay so we will we'll quickly now go on to the long health profile for you to get a sense of to get a sense of what things are on the long health profile that may not be found on the short health profile now i'm not going to go through the whole of the long health profile i'm hoping that you'll get enough of a sense of how to do this through the few pages that i'm looking at you know the whole of the short profile and some of the long profile that you will be able to look at the rest of it yourself so i'm going to look at two or three more pages in the long health profile so i'm going to move that across Make that a bit bigger so here what have we got so here we have we have child development education and primary indicators so here we have low birth weight babies and so again that's a good indicator of child health so low birth weight is not good for babies and has potentially a lifetime impact uh, on the 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 child and the adult that grows up so you can see here uh, the, there are a higher number of low birth weight wages, 3.2% compared to 2.8% uh, or England average, and that is significantly worse. It's a real difference. Even though it's small, it's a real difference. And the same with child development. Child development at age 5 is also not great. It's 58.2% of children age 5 are ready for school, um, have reached the appropriate development in terms of learning and social skills, compared to 60.4% uh, of children in England as a whole. Yeah, So again, that's, that's not great. It's significantly worse. So there's a real difference. But children seem to catch up, which is interesting. So children at age, you know, 16, in GCSE achievement really improves. And you've got 63.2% of children are earning a 5A five, five star to C uh, uh, GCSEs, which includes English and math. So GCSE achievement in terms of at least five 
GCSEs, including English and Maths in there, where the grade was A star or, or B, A star, A, B and C. And then if we look at unemployment, unemployment long, long term unemployment is better. And again, that actually is a figure. If you look here, if you look at six, long term unemployment is a figure that's included here. But the job but the job um, job seeker allowance rate is not included in the short profile. So you've got here unemployment rate as measured by job seeker allowance claimants is higher as is long term. Uh, but long term unemployment uh, in terms of a rate per thousand people uh, who are of working age is lower at 2.3% compared to 3.7%. Yeah. So that's interesting. Not sure how we can what the implications of that are or whether you know it's whether that means that short might this is likely to mean the the difference between the two and having these two indicators is likely to mean that unemployment which is likely to mean short term unemployment is higher in Hounslow generally compared to England 2.1% compared to 1.8% but long term unemployment is lower so basically the, the often people do fall out of work and are claiming job seekers allowance but over the long term they do get seem to get back into work and often long term employment generally means a year or two years uh, uh, of unemployment so and then another key indicator that isn't in the, in uh, the short health part is this it's about health and so here you have and we look at the percentages because as I've said percentages are important you can see across the board general health is significantly better than the England average and the way they've calculated that is they haven't talked about uh, the people what people said about their health in terms of good or fair health they've just focused on bad and very bad health and what it shows is there's a lower number of people lower percentage of people in Hounslow who say they have very bad or bad or very bad health so you've got here and I think the key indicator is the second one that you can talk about you don't need to talk about the first one is because it's they're all both the same if they were different then that would be worth talking about but they're going in the same direction so the proportion, the percentage of people who say their health is bad or very bad is 4.7% compared to an England average of 5.5% and that is a significantly better figure than the England average, yeah? So 47 is significantly better than the England average of 55 and the same goes for long-term limiting illness. Again, only 13.8% of people uh, uh, in Hounslow have a long-term illness or disability compared to 17.6% of England as a whole and obviously that disability is reflected in the number of unpaid carers you know that are caring for people so you see that the numbers of hours people care for uh, is lower you know so for people who are providing one hour or more of unpaid care is only 8.8% compared to 10.2% England average and similarly those people who are providing or the percentage of people providing care for 50 hours or more a week is only 1.9% which is significantly lower than uh, the England average of 2.4%. Then here we again have figures and uh, indicators that are not included in uh, the short health profile and that's about housing and the living environment. And again here for fuel poverty you can see the two key figures that they've identified is fuel poverty is lower but overcrowding is higher, significantly higher and in, even in terms of actual proportions it's higher. It's almost double if, if not almost triple what the England average is. So overcrowding is so 21.8% of people, of residents, are living in overcrowded households compared to, uh, which is significantly worse than the England average of 8.7%. And then same with pensioners living alone. So again, while the figure is not so different, it is significantly worse. So 32. 2% of pensioners are living alone, which is significantly worse than the England average of 31.5%. So this is what this means is it's a real difference. Yeah, even though the number is quite small, you know, the difference 
between the two numbers is, is, is small. What, the significance is not about whether it's big or big, whether it's a big difference between the two numbers. It's whether it's a real difference between the two numbers, whether it's a true difference, or is it something that was just varying? So next year you'll be lower, and the year after that you'll get higher and lower and higher uh, 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 over time. Because, of course, remember, things are changing every year. There'll be changes, natural changes, variations, random changes happening every year. So the question is, is it a real difference? Is it a real change that we need to be worried about that we need to do more research on and in this case this is showing that for both overcrowding and for pensions as well there is something real happening that we may we should probably if we have the depending on what other priorities we might develop we may need to have a look at and, and do some more research on Okay, as, a, as we've already briefly talked about uh, obesity in year six, which is also mentioned in the uh, uh, short profile here, uh, indicator nine. But here you also have reception year. So, and again, if we look at the graph first, you can see obesity in children in reception year is significantly worse, but excess weight is not so, it's actually better. But unfortunately, obesity and overweight, excess weight, is worse in year six. And that kind of, again, the two, this is just giving more detail compared to the, compared to the short profile. So again, you can see here each of those figures, you know, obesity, 10.2% the, the of children are obese in reception year, which is significantly worse uh, than the England average of 9.3%. However, the number the percentage of children uh, with excess weight who are overweight in reception year is significantly lower or better than the England average of 21.1 percent versus 22.2 percent and then the same we can say about obesity in year six that it's worse 23.4 percent compared to the England average of 19.3 percent and the same goes for excess weight and I won't say any more than that and I think then we have a range of things we can talk about. And here we're really just going to focus on the negative. So here, something interesting happening in terms of accident emergency attendances, attendances for not to four year olds, it's significantly worse. Yeah, it's, it's higher. So if we look at not emergency admissions, but A&E attendances, not to four year olds. So it's different. So emergency admissions is how many children are admitted as emergencies. But here is how many children are attending are coming to accident emergency, then you can see the figure is 967.5 children, not to four year olds, for every thousand people are attending accident emergency compared to half that, 551.6. So there's something going on there. Yeah, we're not sure what, but you know, a lot of children are coming and going to A&E perhaps as their first, um, um, contact you know perhaps instead of their gp we don't know but it's it's much higher as you can see than the england average what about adult behavior factor again this is not something that is in there there is smoking prevalence which we'll come on to so 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 here in the long health profile there is nothing about smoking but there is something about smoking if you look here 12 smoking prevalence in adults so here this is where you mix the two together so smoking prevalence in adults in 2016 was 13.8 and we will just check what that is whether it's a percentage yeah it's a percentage it doesn't say it just says current smokers but uh, you can assume that that is a percentage yeah 13.8 percent compared to 15.5 percent and then if we look at obese adults and binge drinking, so you can see that binge drinking, 12.2% of adults binge drink, which is significantly lower or better than the England average. Yeah. And which is 20%. And then healthy eating is also better that 36.6%. 36%. So healthy eating is also better, significantly better at 36% compared to 28.7% for England. So, and lastly, obesity is also lower in adults, yeah? So there's something happening. So you can see that obesity at year six is, is, is worse. So adults at the moment aren't obese, but maybe the children over time, because once you become overweight and obese as a youngster, 
it's more likely you're going to be overweight and obese as an adult. Yeah, so currently adults are doing okay. They're doing they're a lot better than England. Twenty point five percent compared to twenty four point one percent England average. Okay, I'm I'm going. This is going to be the last one we're going to do. So you can see here, again, emergency hospital admissions for all causes is worse. Uh, coronary heart disease is worse, and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease COPD chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is worse here yes so again and here you're using standard admissions ratio so the rate is the England average is 100 so what you're saying here is to say for all causes yeah a hundred hundred and four point one people are going having an emergency hospital admission compared to every hundred people in England yeah so and let's do it for the other two so 123.5 people in Hounslow are having emergency hospital admissions for coronary heart disease compared to a hundred people in England on average and lastly 112.1 people or have in Hounslow or having emergency hospital admissions for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease compared to a hundred in England. And again, we can't say why, but you know, we we need to do more research to understand it. So it's important not to make so any guesses or assumptions about why what's that. Saying. What's it? What it is saying is we need to look at this and understand why we're having more of these emergency hospital admissions. As we showed before, with cancer incidence in general, you can see here, this is a much more detailed thing, we can see that cancer rates are lower generally, but specifically it's colorectal cancer and prostate cancer, yeah, with lung cancer and breast cancer being pretty similar to the England average. So it's it's the color, lower levels of colorectal cancer and prostate cancer that is reducing you know, that is giving this good figure that, you know, the num the cancer incidence rate and the cancer mortality rate is lower. So here, let me just emphasize this. Here we, in the short profile, in the short profile, we looked at mortality rates from cancer, yeah, here, and we looked at it here, early deaths from cancer, and this is under 75 early deaths from cancer here as well. But here, this is not about deaths this is about incidents how many people get cancer in a year on average yeah so this is what this is and this is we're talking about standardized incidence ratio so we can compare it against England so so in Hounslow 92.1 people get some kind of cancer every year compared to 100 people in England yeah and in terms of colorectal cancer 87.8 .8 people get colorectal cancer every year in Hounslow compared to 100 people on average in England. So for prostate cancer, 84.6 people get prostate cancer in Hounslow compared to 100 people who get cancer in England on average every year. And then we can do the same for this, which is admissions ratios. We can do the same for mortality ratios. And we can do that and I'm not going to talk about this and we come to the end here. Yeah. So hopefully this has been a good introduction. Please review it. Please think through this. You will need to play around as in reflect on it, read it. It is not a mechanical exercise, it's not a robotic exercise. And please make sure you get the units right. Yes. The units often for the in the long health profile are not so easy to spot. They are easy to spot if you make sure you read the indicator notes at the bottom here for the short health profile. Thank you. If you have got to this point and you've been still listening, thank you very much. And I hope you found it as useful and enjoyable as I have found uh, talking and doing this video tutorial.